Building the right list of vendors to spend time on is really hard, but also really important. You can spend so much of your efforts on the wrong vendors. And so it's important to spend some time upfront, sort of making your hit list, five to 10 companies you wanna spend time with, and ideally getting that down to three or four that you wanna really focus on quickly. First place to go is always your network. Who have you worked with in the past that you respected? Who have you met at conferences, et cetera? Who you trust to give you a listing of the three or four companies that you think are relevant. The other awesome thing to tap into is all of these online groups that are on Facebook, on LinkedIn, even some on Reddit that will tell you when you ask the question, hey, what's the best ATS out there? They'll give you a couple of suggestions, places to go, and importantly, a place to start. You'll start seeing the same names again and again. And of course, those are the ones you should actually take a deeper look at. Google, believe it or not, is actually also a great place to get started when trying to build that list of vendors. Typing in something like, what are the best Apple contracting systems into Google will yield lots of results. Um, if you stick to that first page or so, you can actually usually get a pretty good listing. Um, but we wanted to call it a couple of things here to be aware of the pitfalls, particularly when going through this approach, as well as even through your network. So it all comes down to bias, right? Individuals who you ask are going to be incredibly biased by maybe having a really good or really bad sales rep, having an implementation that worked because they had good internal stakeholder management or vice versa. There's all these things that will influence what somebody likes and doesn't like. And so our advice here is when somebody recommends a solution, ask them why. And if it's something as sort of superficial as, oh, I heard they were a good solution, maybe take it with a grain of salt. If it's, hey, we implemented it, here's the ROI that we're getting, that's something you should probably take a look at. Review bias, if you look at the online reviews for the majority of software out there, they're incredibly positive. The average rating on a website like a Yelp or Glassdoor is in the threes for something like software. It's usually in the fours. The reason that these reviews are so positive is because the VP of marketing for all the vendors is making sure their best customers go on and leave reviews. And therefore there's a limited amount of signal that you can actually get from these sorts of online resources. The last thing here is list bias. So if you type in best ATS right now to Google as of May, 2019, the third or fourth result there is a medium blog post that lists, I think it's 20 ATSs. The third one down is the only one linked. And if you dig a little bit, you realize that the people that put this list together are the third one down. They're just writing about this through a pseudonym and using it as a mechanism to drive traffic to their website. And therefore, can you trust the rest of their lists? Probably not. So it really just comes down to when you get that first recommendation, dig a little bit deeper in all of these cases to understand why somebody's recommending it to you. Did they have a really good or bad experience? Do they have some money to make, etc.? That's how we recommend you starting off your vendor discovery and building that shortlist.